So as I walk the streets with a rather stuffy nose, I keep coming up with reasons why people may be homeless on the streets of San Francisco. Keep in mind that this is just one city where the homelessness is rampant. And the reason why it is so rampant, one of the reasons is because I believe people have given up. If you're homeless, it's most likely because you've given up, because you've lost some important resource, and you're just literally like, what the fuck? What the fuck is the point? Today I felt rather disappointed um, because I was upset at, you know, my job is difficult for me. Uh, I can't seem to get enough sleep. I know I choose to go see movies late at night, but if I don't go to a movie theater late at night or I don't go out to eat or something like that, then I tend to go home. But I'm not really upset about that so much as I'm upset about being distracted and being assaulted every chance that the world gets. I'm simply just trying to live my life. You can't really just go to work and then go home in a safe way anymore. It's just like you have to be attacked by somebody. And just so happens I was attacked by a homeless person. Luckily for me, I was not robbed. And, um, that is a good thing. But, you know, I, I keep some type of self-defense item on me at all times. Just for events where people, somebody may try to rob me or attack me. And as I was told by my older brother, always be aware of your surroundings. So I tend to walk, look around me as I walk. I look around me as I walk. But anyway, as I want to talk about the homeless... I think a lot of people are homeless just because of the fact that they have given up. And it is so easy, it is so easy with the temptation to give up because what's the point of working for a home if that home just has you living in a place where you can walk? So basically it's the concept of you walk to live so that you can live to walk. And if you're living to walk, for someone, that person is paying you to basically invest your life, the time in your life, to the task that they want you to do. So if you're working for an employer, basically you're investing your life into someone else's. And it's not really worth it unless that person somehow gives you something in return. Because as we look at relationships, relationships are not about all, you know, just take all. It's always a give and take. And when I say it's always a give and take, that essentially means that you give something in exchange for something. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that. There's still a lot of people that think, they think for themselves, they're self-centered, narcissistic even. And, you know, despite the educational level, you, all people have got to understand that there's a give and take. And, you know, I've had people try to fool me before with my naivety, my naiveness of my, uh, of my autism, my Asperger's syndrome, as I guess you would call it, it used to be called. But I've learned just to not really trust anybody, you know. Um, some people, I, sometimes I, have a, I just listen out of curiosity and kindness. But even then, I, I've learned that in San Francisco, you have to basically just stick with what you're trying to do. Stay in your own niche. Niche. And I see a lot of people doing that. A lot of people, they mind their own business. <laughs> they don't go around exploring and getting into everything. So, but really, I just thought to myself, if you're, walk, if you're living to walk, you're not really living. You're not living for yourself. You're living... I work for someone else. And that job enables you to pay for a place to stay, to live. That way you can continue to walk. So you're living to walk, and you're walking to live. And you're not really living, you know. You're not doing what you want to do. Um, I think when it comes to jobs, you can't just have a job to pay the rent. I keep telling myself, I want a job so I can pay rent. But... 
I have to set higher goals. I want a place to live, but as I figured out a long time ago, about five years ago, living in an apartment is actually an investment. Not a monetary investment, it's really more of a life investment. Because you're investing a part of your life so that you can have a place to stay, so that you can continue to work and make money. Not just to pay the rent for that place, to pay for a better home or a higher education. A lot of people invest in their education because they want to get that higher job. You know, some people want to invest in, you know, they save up for nursing school college, they save up for any trade school, because they want to learn a trade that they could use to make even more money. And, you know, a lot of times I was given the free option, you know, I had the free option of uh, school or maybe just taking out, you know, the federal student loans and even the private loans just to have money to pay for school. But those loans have to be repaid. And if I have any hope of paying money, I have to have a job, just like anyone else. And in order to get a job in the field that I want, that I, you know, chose, IT, I need certain certifications. And even those certifications cost money. So I just have to actually budget what I want to pay for. Um, besides the 1100 in rent, I have to pay $100 a month to pay off the entire 600 for this class. There was also the MOGA, the, there's also the ASUS, ASUS Turn left onto Market Street. The ASUS ROG Ally that I just bought a month ago and I had to make one final payment of that amongst other payments. And damn, even the dogs got a mat. You know, I just I just think to myself that investing is is quite it's quite the thing it's quite the uh it's quite the adventure. But I'm not talking about monetary investing like, you know, Robin Hood or some shit. I'm not talking about investing in you know, you know installments or uh what they call the uh Well, I, 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 the term slips from my mind, but you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about standard investing. I'm talking about investing time. I'm talking about investing effort. You know, you may not think of that's investing, but investing effort and time, it's, it's using your time and your effort to, for, to get something in return. And this is basically what work is involved. Working is basically investing your time and effort in exchange for something else. Take for example people that ride bikes. I see in San Francisco a lot of people riding bikes, scooters, you know, besides the bus. They, they have all these unique ways of getting around. But San Francisco is a very bikeable place. But the point I'm, I'm making is that they have something that either someone's bought them or they've invested in. So they've personally invested in it, or somebody may have invested in them by, by making a small purchase for that said person to have something they can use to get them by. But that small investment can be used for higher purpose. You find a job and you have a vehicle to get you to that job without you having to pay 15 to $20 per Uber or Lyft drive or if you happen to get a Waymo uh, AI driverless vehicle, you just pay, what, $200 solid for a decent bicycle, or maybe 1000 or 1500 for a decent electric bike or scooter, and a specialized lock. So, anyway, um, the reason why I made this about the homeless situation is because I just thought to myself, if a, a key reason people may be homeless is because they've given up. The fact that they've given up means that they think to themselves, if they have to live to walk for someone, just so they can walk to live, if they have to walk to live for someone, just so that they can live to walk, that's just the end of the cycle, and what's the point? They don't get their end goals. 
you know, uh, and to me, of course it's good to have a job, but at some point you question yourself, is there anything more, is there any other way you can get what you really want to obtain versus simply just walking? 